What is the Xuan Wing Chun course curriculum? Now, as with any educational course, you must reach one level before moving up to the next. If you rush through any course or cheat to jump to the next level, then you will not learn it properly. You will have only cheated yourself. To be good at anything, you need to put in the time in studying and practicing. Otherwise, you'll be just average at it or even bad. I'm sure you're enrolling into my course because you want to be good in Wing Chun. So, treat it as uh, treat it like any of your hobbies where you have invested your time and money. Now, actually, the Wing Chun course is very small and compact compared to other uh, martial arts or Chuan Fa. For example, Taekwondo has about 20 forms to learn plus the drills. And so does the Shotokan Karate. On the other hand, Wing Chun has only six. Three of open standalone forms that you do by yourself and three using apparatus. So if you were to just memorize the sequential movements of these forms, you will learn it in a very short time. However, you won't be able to apply them practically, have power behind them, or understand their functionalities. It's just like a parrot that can talk and sing, but does not understand the words or, or make conversations from them. So if you just learn to emulate uh, the movements from the videos or from your teacher, then you're just like a monkey impersonating a human being. My course follows the traditional outline with the forms and the drills. I have also added some new drills to them. Now the first form is called Siu Nim Tao. The second form is called Chang Q. The third one is called Biu Ji. The fourth one is called Muk Yang Zhong. And the fifth one is called Luk Tim Bun Kun. And the sixth one, the final one, is called Ba Jam Do. Now these are Cantonese terminology. Now, Wing Chun got popularized in Hong Kong with the Chinese speak a certain type of Cantonese dialect. Even within the Cantonese dialect, there are various different uh, versions of it. I'm actually not a Cantonese speaker. However, I picked up some when I was learning Wing Chun because uh, my first teacher and all the students were, were Cantonese from Hong Kong. I speak Mandarin Chinese called Po Tong Hua in China these days. Okay. I speak also another dialect uh, called Yunnanese. Now, my first teacher spoke Mandarin with Cantonese accent, and also the, the students uh, spoke some English, and that's how you know I communicated and learned Wing Chun. But later on, I learned Wing Chun from teachers who also spoke English. So anyhow, I did uh, learn the Cantonese terminologies for uh, Wing Chun and have always taught it that way. However, I've decided this time to teach in Putonghua, the terminology to use the Putonghua. Why? Well, in the early 70s, 80s, China did not welcome visitors from overseas, so nobody went to China. However, today, they love foreign visitors. Or should I say they, they love the foreign currencies? So if you went to China today and, and asked where the nearest Yung Chun school was, Wing Chun school was, they would know what you're talking about because everywhere in China they speak Putonghua in addition to their own local dialect. The only place in China that would recognize the term, uh, term Wing Chun or Wing Chun is in the Canton province, uh, now called Guangzhou. In Putonghua, uh, Wing Chun is pronounced Yong Chun. So the reason I'm uh, changing this terminology is that now 
Putonghua uh, is widely spoken in China, in Southeast uh, China, such as um, Taiwan, Singapore, Malaysia, and even in Guangzhou, and also in Hong Kong. However, I will continue using the, term, uh, the word Wing Chun because of the ease of recognition and familiarity. Other than that, I will use Putonghua terminologies for the movements within Wing Chun. And I will, of course, also translate the movements into English to help you understand the meanings. Now, the first form, Xiu Nim Tao, in Putonghua is pronounced Xiao Nian Tao. When translated, it is the little thinking head. I will explain the meaning of this, uh, this in the next lecture. This form represents the first level of Wing Chun studies. Here you focus on building a strong and rooted structure. You will also learn the principles and fundamentals of Wing Chun. You will be introduced to some main hand tools or hand weapons of Wing Chun. And important movements from the form are extracted and made into drills that a student can practice repeatedly and regularly to, to form good habits and to understand them. Now, what is a form? Well, just as the word means, it represents shapes and movements. Now, boxing, wrestling, football, uh, hockey, they actually all have forms, but in the form of drills. Whereas Chuenfo forms are more like choreographed dance and dances done by oneself or with a group. However, Chuenfas also have uh, drills done singularly or two men or more. Now, why the forms? Well, unlike sparring where you are being attacked, there is no threat in practicing the forms and drills. Therefore, you get the chance to perform the movements perfectly. In other words, it can be perfected, which will give you the chance to reach near perfection under duress or threats, such as sparring or real fighting situations. In most twin fast systems, the forms are what I call what you see is what you get. That is, a punch looks like a punch, a kick looks like a kick, a block looks like a block. Whereas, uh, some Wing Chun or some uh, Chuen Fa's like Wing Chun and uh, Tai Chi, the forms are encrypted to hide the functionalities of the movements and to appear as harmless as possible, just like a dance. At the Xiao Nian Tao level, drills will consist of Pai Shou, Cantonese, Pak Sao, in English, clapping hand. Then there's Tan Chi Shou, Cantonese, Tan Chi Sao, or the single sticky hand. And the Wu Shao, or Lok Sao in Cantonese, the rolling arms in stationary position. The second form is called Xun Chao or Cham Q in Cantonese, translated as probing the bridge or seeking the connection. This form is basically your uh, intermediate level course. Here you learn to move your structure that you had built in Xiao Nian Tao with power, safety, and balance. And you are also introduced to the uh, two Wing Chun kicks. Now at this level, the Pai Shao uh, drill is uh, moved up to the next level which where you're going to start stepping into the drill, stepping and doing the Pai Shou, and using dual arm actions like Tan Da and Pak Da, like this. You'll also start uh, learning a few uh, dual arm Chi Shou attacking and trapping techniques, which uh, as you advance in the uh, uh, Xun Chao level, you will also learn to apply it freely in a sort of a Chi Shou attack and defense two-man practice like this. The, f the third form is called the Piao Zhi or Piu Zhi in Cantonese, uh, translated as target point or pointing at the target. At this level, you're getting into the real advanced level. You will learn to use your hips in all six directional tilts to power your upper body. 
you'll also be introduced to uh, new tools to fight advanced practitioners. And you'll be using elbow strikes, leg traps, grappling, takedowns. This is when you actually start sparring freely uh, with your uh, partner and without the initial contact. Okay? You also learn to connect and control him with the sticking techniques that you had learned. The fourth form is called Mu Ren Zhuang, Muk Yang Zhong, Cantonese. In English, wooden man prop. Now in the West, it is referred to as the dummy form. The fundamental movements of the dummy can actually be taught and practiced in the Xiao Nian Tao level if you have a dummy on hand, and I will teach that. A few sections of the form can also be taught in conjunction with the second form, Xun Chao, because the Xun Chao uh, form includes stepping and rotating, shifting, and so on. And that's what you require in the dummy form. Now, but when you uh, get to the pewter level and you've completed it, then you will learn the whole dummy form. The dummy form is just an extension of all the movements and drills that you had learned in the standalone forms. It is an apparatus for you to develop power, precision, and perfection. The next form is called Liu Tian Ban Kun. In Cantonese, Lu Tian Pun Kun. In English, six point half pole. What does that mean? Well, there are different theories as to why the name is, uh, why the form is called that. Uh, one, one of it is the length of the pole, which is six and a half Chinese feet long. One Chinese foot equals to 1.5 imperial foot. So the length of the pole is 6.5 times 1.5, which is 9.5, uh, 9.75 imperial foot long. So almost 10, 10 feet long. The other explanation is, is that the form is sectioned into six and a half parts, which I find a little bit strange because, you know, what is half a part? Why not call it just one whole thing? Okay, so uh, maybe, you know, it should have been called the seven section pole form. The other point to consider is that the terminology liu tian ban, six point half, is usually used to refer to the time 6.30 or six and a half hour. So the pole, may, the pole form may have contained secret messages uh, related to the time 6.30. Now, I don't know. Although the pole can be considered as a weapon training form, my feeling is that it is more for developing power in the legs for stability and balance and for the punching power. Because such a long pole lacks practical usage as a weapon in the streets. And bearing in mind that uh, the streets those days were very, very narrow. Okay, so they didn't have cars. Okay, so uh, and also there were there was no reason for anybody to carry such a long pole uh, walking in the streets, walking around the ten foot pole. Now the pole was inducted into the Wing Chun system by the Red Junk Opera actors, who used it to navigate the boat out of the shallow waters, like to push them off like this. The last and the highest level of the system is called Ba Chan Tao, or in Cantonese, Ba Jom Tao, uh, in English, Eight Severing Sword Form. Uh, it is often translated as the Eight Cutting, Eight Chopping, or Eight uh, Slashing Sword Form. However, the word Tran refers to something much more, than, much more severe than just cutting or slashing it is used to describe beheading a person or cutting the body in half, which the Chinese did as a capital punishment. This is why I'm calling it the eight severing swords form. Although these days the form is taught to, to students who have only done about three, four years or even five years of Wing Chun, but uh, that's not how it used to be. Now traditionally it was reserved only for the heir of a Wing Chun family. Okay? It does have uh, some powerful information, but 
it's not going to suddenly propel an average practitioner to the highest level. Okay? So actually this was given to the practitioner who has already achieved the highest level in every way. Okay? It, it basically represents the trophy that a winner gets at the end of the race. Now you wouldn't uh, pass a trophy to someone in the middle of the race or someone who hasn't proven his abilities. So anyhow, it will be taught when you have reached a very high level of the Wing Chun. Not only in, uh, in phys physicality, but mentally. Here again, I believe the sword form is to enhance one's growth rather than to learn it for weapon usage. Now, any weapon is an extension of your arms. The principles of Wing Chun will allow you to use any weapon proficiently even a gun. Now, I believe the founders of Wing Chun were so advanced in their thinking that they knew that all weapons become obsolete and will be replaced by better ones. Even during the time, during the development of Wing Chun, the arm length knives were useless against long swords, spears, chain weapons. Okay? So, I believe the founders decided you know, to focus on unarmed combat rather than to spend time learning some weapons that will become obsolete. Now look at it today. What can you do with your knives and pull against a gun? Well, something you learn in the Wing Chun that can help because the only effective weapon that you can have on you at all times is your brain. This is what the Xuan Wing Chun curriculum uh, focuses on the development of your brain. All the things you've learned in the form and drills will focus on developing your awareness. So when you have that kind of awareness, you will make the right decision at the right time for whatever action you need to take. So that is the Xuan Wing Chun training curriculum.